All righty. Uh, so we're going to be playing uh, a one shot adventure called uh, The Fun House. First, I'd like to do like safety tools. Um, I try to keep things uh, PG-13, kind of like anything that you could get away with in a, in a big Marvel movie we could do. Of course, it's Fist, so it's going to be comic book hyper violence, which is fine. Uh, I try to avoid like super like graphic descriptions of violence and stuff. Um, I do an open table game. So if you have to leave for any reason, that's cool. No worries. If you want to come back later, that's cool too. You know, if you need to get up for anything, no problem. Uh, also every hour or so or 45 minutes, I'll call for a five minute break. And, uh, also we all do like the X card. So if something like weirds you out or grosses you out, or you're not cool with content, just let me know and we'll stop, rewind it, whatever and standard stuff uh okay so uh i'd like to go around and starting with um not pot could you say your name your preferred pronouns and then your character and their pronouns for my notes cool cool hi i am not potable water uh, my pronouns are he him and my character is bantamweight who doesn't have pronouns he is just <laughs> bantamweight <laughs> nice Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, Subi, would you like to go next? Yeah. Hi, I'm Subi. I go by him, he, him, and uh, I'm be playing Angel, who goes by whatever. So, the opposite of Bantamweight. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Iggy, would you like to go? Hi, I'm NG. I am surprisingly he, him, and uh, my character is base plate who, uh, being a mechanical monstrosity, <laughs> it goes by he, him, or just it, if you prefer. Nice. <laughs> okay, I think we got a good crew here. Styles <laughs> <laughs> of what? <laughs> uh, it's a standard issue fist party, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I like to use uh, the chopper chatter optional rule, meaning uh, we're going to fly into the mission zone in a helicopter. Uh, as always, this is a, a stolen news chopper that Fist has acquired. Uh, <laughs> you all get like a brief opening scene to plan, introduce yourselves to each other, do a little bit of role playing. And at the end of it, you'll each earn a war dice. Uh, the fist chopper is flying along. You are all in the back, along with a young lady who is dressed like a pirate. She's got a she's got a pirate hat with skull and crossbones. She's got uh, red pigtails that stick straight out, and she's got striped stockings. And she's just kind of she looks miserable. <laughs> yeah. How can you be miserable when you dress like that? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, anybody want to start or <laughs> yeah when you guys that's the I'll I'll go uh, uh so uh what you see is uh a cloak clad figure like one of those long trench coat wise uh, wearing like a hoodie and on top of a hoodie it's like a dog color type situation that's kind of made to look like a halo uh they are changing poses every time like when you look at them like cannot sit for the life of them uh and just uh you know, just fiddling with a pistol at this moment uh it's you know the code name they go by is angel uh so angel looks up at the lady uh everything fine you <laughs> you, you you got a thing so in uh in, in in a voice that's very much a young lady trying to sound like a gravelly old pirate <laughs> she says gar i'm afraid not uh, and she kind of <laughs> <laughs> she kind of coughs and clears her throat and begins speaking normally. And she tells you that uh, she's worried about her grandfather. 
and her grandfather is named Wally, and he is uh, uh, one of the original members of, of Fist. And hmm. these days, he's semi-retired and runs a training camp known as the Fun House. Uh, the Fun House is it's where you know new Fist recruits go to train. Um, normally. It is a, a nice, safe, non-lethal place. But this morning, a distress call went out that says that the fun house has been uh, ticked up into full lethal mode and no one can get in contact with them. And her, her grandfather is somewhere inside. Uh, if, if you're unable to rescue him, it will not only be a blow to her family, losing her dear grandfather, it'll be a blow to fist because... From here on, like training is just gonna suck. Like the fun house is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and only her grandfather knows how it works. It's this weird wow. low budget facility. Uh, uh she she says that they like to tell people if anyone reads comic books, it's a bit like the X-Men's danger room. Only uh. Fist can't afford to make a danger room, but Fist can afford to make rooms dangerous <laughs> and that is the fun house oops all claymores <laughs> them uh, well they were sounds sounds like a thing that happened sounds like a recipe for disaster also not a fan of comic books they're good kindle though so i'll give them that uh and you too and just points a pistol at both of you safe safety off really bad <laughs> kind of handling at this point so uh sitting up in one corner of the um of the helicopter still very straight very stiff scanning the uh, horizon of the helicopter and then sort of turning back towards uh angel as she as they point a gun at the is she yeah she uh, sorry whatever <laughs> as as they point a gun at base plate, you see, sort of, it's humanoid in the sort of in structure. You know, two arms, two feet. Uh, body's quite me metal, angular. Sort of, think about like how a tank's built, and then put that onto a person. That's base plate. Oh, and he also has his his head as a security camera, pretty much. <laughs> nice. See, so, yeah, he sort of sits up, turns around, and says. Sounds all good. However, I must ask one: Why does this play? Why does <clears throat> this playhouse have full lethality? That sounds rather dangerous. And two: He sort of turns towards um, the pirate girl. Is your father also a pirate? <laughs> um. So, uh, the girl who's I forget if I said her name, but her code no. name is Long Stockings. Oh my god! <laughs> and so. Uh, she says it's actually her her grandfather. Uh, he is he's not a pirate. Uh, he is he is actually, and she like leans in to impart a secret, and she goes, "It's actually a homebrew custom trait." Uh, he, is, <laughs> 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 he has a a genius level improvisational engineer, uh, kind of like more references coming, kind of like MacGyver. She says, "Have you ever heard of MacGyver?" They stole my grandfather's story and based it on him uh, but her grandfather is capable of making anything out of anything else he can diffuse a bob with like a a, a, a matchstick and another matchstick so mm. yeah and base plate's going to be just nodding along just pretending <laughs> to know what a macgyver is <laughs> yeah same is it, is it like a book because i probably burnt it just you know, refresh memory <laughs> type situation. It's a it's a TV show, but you may have melted your TV, so VHS oh. or something. Yeah, thankfully I don't own a TV. <laughs> you are the TV. <laughs> I am. Bantam I am. Sorry, sorry. You first. No, you first. Uh, Bantam sits in the other corner. He's <laughs> if you're looking at him at eye level. You just see his little pointy cone hat. Um, and he's got his, his hairs all over the place. He's got like slightly graying a little bit, but mostly brown hair. 
green eyes, bushy eyebrows, a massive beard. And he's there in his really stereotypical, um, like light blue gnome shirt with red cargo trousers and brown leather boots. And he's sat there and he's looking around and he flexes and the shirt just rips <laughs> immediately. Like <laughs> he sits there and he goes, oh, not another one. Oh, oh no. Damn, I thought that was a garden gnome. Holy fuck. That was the one. I'm a, I'm a regular gnome, and we take offense to that. Uh, sorry. Oh, it's people were that. forced underground by those ceramics. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry for that. That's. C- can I pu- punch the ceramics now without feeling guilt? Right. No, that's why that's... I train. He flexes. He says. <laughs> Somebody else's shirt rips off in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bantam turns to Longsong and goes, You also didn't answer the question! Is your father a pirate? <laughs> While still flex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Log stockings. Uh, looks like she's getting a little frustrated. She's like, Grandfather? Grandfather, no, 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 no. we are asking father? about your father. We are asking, we're not oh. asking about Wally, we're oh, asking about your father. And, and, um, and she's like, No, he's an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Family goes everywhere. Does he sail on an accounting ship? <laughs> uh, so, so just then the, the helicopter slows and the pilot tells you that you're almost here you have all earned a war dice Yay. Oh. Uh, and before they play. drop you off long stockings tells you uh to be careful uh she wishes she wishes that she could tell you more about what's coming but her grandfather like routinely changes up the fun house and she has no idea what dangers you might face today um so, so you are all... gonna flex in response to that <laughs> There um, is one thing yeah. in the world that is afraid of me and its structures. <laughs> That's it. Like me, I'm not programmed for fear. Oh, that actually reminds me, I'm a robot. I need to do my programming. That's right. So, uh, uh, do, uh, Angel or Phantom, do whoever you want to be my programmer. I'll do it. What do you want? Phantom only understands flexing. He doesn't understand programming. So, uh, so for robot, I'll need two <laughs> things. One is a free word, just free words as my core, my core programming. Uh, was it it's, uh, something along those lines? Uh, and whenever I, and during this mission, whenever I do something that follows those that free word uh, program, uh, core program. I'll gain advantage on that dice. <laughs> for a robot. So, for uh-huh. a robot. Three words. Three words. Okay. Kick it down. <laughs> Take it down. Kick it down. Kick. Specifically kick. Take it. Kick it down. Yes. I thought it was t- okay. I like I will... that. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I love that we have eight. accepted. We have a puncher and a kicker now. <laughs> <laughs> and an arsonist. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are three types of people in this world. Punchers, kickers, and arsonists. <laughs> oh. Yes. Indeed. And... <laughs> Take the quiz at the end of the video to find out who are you. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, And uh, I also... Oh, yeah. Just quickly, sorry. Yeah, and I also need a one word does not compute. So whenever... It's more of a broad concept. So, uh, whenever this, uh, whenever I am confronted by this, this could be like love, war, peace, someone else. Um, I will either shut down for ten minutes uh, in game time, or immediately take a d6 of damage from sparks flying out my head. I assume. <laughs> Damn. Uh, hmm. And please don't what make it we... traps because that's going to be terrible in this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> uh, 
One word, you say. Uh, Just one uh, word. Um, a general broad concept. Yeah, general broad concept. Damn, that is a hard one if anybody can also step Dude. in. Oh my god. Dude. <laughs> oh yes. My... Dude. You don't understand food. Problem <laughs> solved. <So> food. Problem <laughs> solved. <laughs> <laughs> What is food but person lubrication? <laughs> it's like oil, except for humans. <laughs> oh, God. It's no, so really. inefficient. Yeah, it's if you're beautiful. okay with Brent. Yeah, if you're okay with yeah, Brent. That sounds bit. awesome. I love it. All righty. So uh, the helicopter lands at the edge of a, of a large, uh, empty field, overgrown field. And in this field, you see a few rusted cars and a couple of like outhouses laying on their sides. You know, the perfect thing for someone to take cover or hide behind. And uh, in the middle of the field, there is a structure. It's a tower made out of shipping containers. It, it looks very haphazard. Some are horizontal, some vertical, one kind of diagonal just kind of like stacked up like a Jenga tower, missing a lot of pieces. Uh, that is the fun house. And surrounding this field and this structure is a, it looks like a pretty easy, like low fence to hop over. Uh, no problem whatsoever, but there are warning signs posted periodically that say, uh, warning, this area is protected by SIGs, S I G, and then a lowercase s. Uh, none of you have ever heard of what a SIG is before, uh, but now you know that this area is protected by them. Uh, so, yeah, little low fence with warning signs, a open field, and in the middle, this tower of shipping containers. What do y'all do? How low is the fence? <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> it comes up to about your forehead like oh no <laughs> about phantom's forehead or yeah phantom's forehead for, for I, I mentioned everyone else is maybe waist or knee high depending yeah. on how tall you are <laughs> yeah but yeah base face is going to look down sort of <laughs> to the left and downwards and just going may I offer you, assist you my assistance just offers our hand <laughs> How strong is the fence? I would like to punch it. <laughs> you okay? Give me a force roll, and we will we will find out how strong this fence is. Oh man! <laughs> Do it. Good lord! I, Super it's the normal. only way. Uh, I've got a nine. It's the point. only way. There are many other ways. This is not the only way. <laughs> now, Phantom, Phantom, do you do you like mutter? This is the only way. Right before yeah. he punches. Yes. Yeah. Immediately before he punches. <laughs> I know nothing but this. This is the way. Um, you uh, you do you you punch the heck out of the. You, you slam your fist against the post, and it it tips over. It. it kind of drags down the wires um this is not an electrified fence this is an easy to knock over fence everything is fine except that at the sound of you punching over this post uh there is a number of like weird sounds from the field it kind of oh. sounds like bloop and so it's kind of, all over the field you hear bloop 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 but the grass is so tall, you can't really see what has changed out there. But it's almost like something is alerted to your presence. You're right. This is the only way I kick the fence more. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and give me a force run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Good Lord. A seven. A seven. <laughs> okay. So once again, <laughs> you knock over. At this point, it's like so much of the fence is knocked down. You can easily walk through. Uh, but out in the field, you see the tall grass rustling and, and waving and like things are coming towards you. Things. What do you do? Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> 
Ooh. Ooh. So it's Toolbox, so, right? Yeah, yeah. It's over your head. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> when I planned this out, I didn't realize I'd have a gnome on the team. <laughs> I'm not just picking on you. <laughs> it's cool. I, I'm well aware. Um, yeah. I'll let Angie go first. Yeah. So is it you said there was some cars and knocked out knocked over outhouses yeah. nearby? Could I potentially and I mean this might not even work, but could I just could basically go over to one, sort of stand on top of it to try and get a bit of a vantage point, see if you yeah. can see into the tour guys from there. Yeah, totally. Uh base plate you, you you climb up on one of the rusted out cars. And now you can get a, a a better view of the field. It looks kind of like these weird lumpy piles of black and gray balls, like maybe half the size of a beach ball, are coming towards you. There's three of them uh, from all corners of this this complex. Uh, it's I'd say it's maybe like a vaguely human sized human amount of them uh and <laughs> they're getting closer by the second what do you do yeah i'll just I'll look towards my uh com my companions here and just say uh, be advised we have multiple balls approaching our location rapidly should i open fire on mention of fire just a minute yes just, just, just yes. <laughs> just yes. <laughs> Pulls out the pistol, <laughs> aims, and just waits for anything to come out. All right. Actually, so no, just... no. I'm actually. Uh, let me let me quickly check something. Well, uh, oh, I'm gonna oh, do no. a reload and just shoot into the grass. Oh. Okay. Stand down, both feet, just blind fire into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an angel move. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll start with a uh, base plate. Uh, you could roll either like force or reflex, depending on what kind of shooting you're doing here. Uh, if it's like precise sniping, or if you just like blindly firing at these guys. <laughs> <laughs> so base plate, he's gonna take his laser rifle off his back. His eyes gonna like glow red and like focus in. He's just gonna take it up and he's just gonna start blasting into the general direction of these uh, advancing balls. Nice. Anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> yeah, so forceful and then uh, that's a nine. Heck yeah. Nice. Um so you you hit, go ahead and roll damage. Uh four. All right. Um <clears throat> with like a weird popping sound. Uh the pile of balls like flatten. And it's just kind of like this, like air being released. Uh, the the bad news is that the other two ball piles lift up out of the grass, and they kind of like roll up on top of each other and slowly form the vague outlines of soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's the the way they look is almost like there's like big boxy pixels forming like this like kind of pixel art rendition of a soldier but it's all 3d and round. voxel yes nice. <laughs> uh they aim uh blocky guns your way it looks like they are about to fire upon you and we'll cut right quick to uh angel uh yeah, uh, yeah. base plate's about to take fire what do you do uh What's what's chance of me tackling down base plate from the position they're at? Uh you could you could climb up there, maybe like grab base plate's legs and, and haul him off the, the car. Uh but you'll have to give me uh roll reflex to get up there in time. Okay. Let's roll reflex. Please. Oh. Uh it's a four. Uh, Oh no! And I use... 
<laughs> is there a chance for a board list now or do I have to announce it before I use it? Oh yeah, you can use it now. Uh you I'm and you all have a war dice from the chopper chatter. Yeah, mm -hmm. war die. Please. <laughs> a six. So it's a ten. That's, That's a, a ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go out. <laughs> So, so base plate for a, a horrible moment. You've got these these two uh, pixelated soldiers about to shoot you, and then all of a sudden you feel somebody grab your your legs and just like haul you, and you get pulled off the car, and a bunch of uh, <laughs> the the bullets are visible. In a, they're they're slow moving projectiles about the size of a fist. Uh, but there are a lot of them. There's like a whole stream that go whooshing overhead. Uh, it looks like they could do some damage. Uh, so <laughs> uh, momentarily, these these things, uh, well, just assume that these are the SIGs you were warned about. Uh, they're, they're focusing fire on now nothing in particular, uh, which gives Bantamweight uh, a chance to act. They're not that far off. What do you do? <laughs> um, do it. So, oh, oh, I'm real tempted to invoke sneak because I would, I would say that the tall grass is the perfect hiding spot. <laughs> oh yeah. So, Bantam is basically going to run into the small grass, tall, small grass, tall grass, and stand <laughs> yeah. as still as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Perfect. So they have no idea you're there. You're you're fully. You have sneaked. You are snuck. You are hidden. <laughs> you are snuck. <laughs> now let's just hope one of them comes close to me so I can punch it in the face. <laughs> or me. Uh, or somewhere now, well, between, perhaps. Well, I have a question, Bantam. Did you did you in any way like? Would you say that this is something that you've like worked out with the team in the past? Would they know that this is kind of like one of your favorite moves is to lure people towards you? Um, there's a chance they might, but he's never discussed it. He just okay. does it. Okay. <laughs> just working mm -hmm. on instinct. Okay. Um, we would just see him run into the grass, right? <laughs> we would just see Bantam run into grass and disappear, right? <laughs> yeah just yeah we look yeah base plate as he's uh sort of he hunkers down behind the car after getting pulled off rather surprisingly he looks over sees um phantom running to the grass he just looks back to angel and just shrugs his shoulders What's he doing? angel shrugs but as you see the shrugging hands you see a grenade in one <laughs> <laughs> uh, health and safety you have a grenade in your hand that is very dangerous. It. I was planning to throw it. But now... Bantam My advice would be to throw that 76% strength at an arc of 90 degrees towards the opponent. Uh, Angel just turns and just... Actually, Angel just yeets it from behind the back. Just like, pulled up in. Whoop. You're blindly throwing a grenade into the field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um... Guess we're uh, mowing the lawn. Uh, <laughs> not pot. Would you roll a die of fate for me? <laughs> oh, oh man, I can definitely do that. Yeah, that I'm is... sorry if this puts a wrench in a plan. That's a five. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> that's that's a good roll. Um, so you're not even particularly like aiming this grenade. You're just kind of like where it'll yeah. fall. Uh, it's more like I know where they were, and I think I have enough practice of chucking different sized things at stuff that it will land where I want it to land, which is near those soldiers. Okay, hmm. could you give me? Oh, we'll just say like a, like a reflex roll to see. Uh, please be nice to me. <laughs> at twelve. What? Big at an eleven Let's plus go. one. At okay. 12. It's not awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Angel blindly chucks a grenade into the field moments after Phantom ran in there. Um, oh, one of the, the pixelated soldiers looks down and kind of drops down into the grass 
and like picks up the grenade and looks at it in confusion. Uh, the last thing they do is like show it to their buddy, like, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one shrugs, and then boom, the grenade goes off. Uh, would you roll uh, grenade damage for me? Uh, uh, damage with it's a d6 just for a grenade four oh I just did damage to myself but I rolled a four (laughs) 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 right. so uh, both of the remaining sigs are uh, blown into smithereens and like smoking balls just go flying everywhere. They're, they're de-rezzed. Uh, Bantam, you were lucky. Uh, with your die of fate, uh, you only take one of that grenade blast damage. <laughs> it's cool. I've got armor. I don't take anything. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. You <laughs> You're just all according to plan. <laughs> one of like. <laughs> What if, like, the smoky gray, like, beach ball things just kind of bounces off your chest and lands in the grass? He then, Bantam is going to flex in response to that immediately. (laughs) (laughs) This is perfect. (laughs) This is not like teamwork. (laughs) What did you say? Oh, Uh, me or? Yeah, basically. I was just saying target neutralized, just. (laughs) Nodding oh. Probably. oh, it did? Oh, damn, that was a wide shot. Damn, nice. <laughs> uh, I, but I think we lost a good friend of ours, takes down the dog collar, puts it to the chest. <laughs> yeah, basically just sort of low antenna. Just... <laughs> it was five minutes, but Bantam lasted. Wait to tear. Bantam uh, starts jumping in the grasses. You see the little oh. cone like peeking out the top of the grass every now and then. Oh, B- Bantam's alive. Never mind. Put, put it back. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> well, well, all right. So uh, there's like a big smoking crater. All the grass is blown away. Is um, there fire? Is my question. There is a couple of small, like little patches of fire here and there. It yeah. looks like it'll probably burn out. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. not going to ca- cause a widespread wildfire type stuff. Uh, no, no. Okay, luckily, good. yeah. We like controlled fire in this house. It's, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you are professional. None of that <laughs> rampaging yeah. forest fire. We- <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's so time and place. It looks like uh, uh, for the moment, uh, no more SIGs are on the way. Uh, certainly, they probably would have been <laughs> alerted by that grenade. So you feel fairly safe. Up ahead, there is the structure itself, the fun house, the awkward stack of welded together shipping containers. Um, uh, before the mission, you were told that there are, there are two possible ways in. You can take uh, what's called the front door, and just a, you know, an ele- a quick elevator ride up, no problems. Uh, <laughs> not po- you know, elevators are always good. Uh, and then um, uh, there's also uh, a rope ladder leading to one of the horizontal containers that just kind of hang off the structure, and you could climb up there through the hatch. But again, they have no idea what awaits you anywhere, so mm-hmm. it just. Whatever you feel like taking, what'll it be? Well, so as, the machine, as, as a machine enthusiast here, I think the elevator would be the perfect option. <laughs> Elevators have never gone wrong, ever. <laughs> Period. So that's one rope ladder and one yeah. elevator. I guess, uh, Angel, you're the tiebreaker. Uh, wait, Bantam already said? Oh, yeah. Gnomes love rope ladders. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's a thing. Uh, one is within the structure. One is out of the structure. I hate structures, but one it seems safer, and I cannot climb. So dice of fate to this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, Angel literally pull out the dice. <laughs> On a one, two, three, it's elevator. Okay. Uh, 
Wait, uh, dice. Uh, how come? Ah, there we go. One, one, two, three is elevator. It's a five. So ropes. Rope ladder. It is. Yeah, you just hear sad beeping noises from base plate. <laughs> no, not sad beeping noises. Um, who will be the first to climb? We can already guess. <laughs> <laughs> It is the only way. Bantam loves rope ladders, and he also loves showing off how strong he is. Oh, so yeah. he's he's just going to pull himself up this rope ladder. <laughs> Bantam, you you uh, you climb up that rope ladder like like a blur. Like it's almost unbelievable how fast you climb this rope ladder. Uh, up ahead, there's an unopened hatch, almost like a like a like a hatch in a submarine or something. And you you lift it up. <clears throat> And look around, and you see you're peeking up through an open grave. Um, <laughs> there are, it's a larger room. It's got to be at least a few shipping containers like welded together. It is made to look like a graveyard. Overhead, there is kind of like a, a spotlight uh, with a with a spooky face painted on it to serve as a moon uh <laughs> there are there are gravestones all around there's some low mist uh there's like blinking christmas light stars in the in the sky which is the low ceiling uh and in the distance you hear like some people like hooting and hollering and yelling almost like like rowdy people are having a party or something uh there's also the flickering of a bonfire what do you oh, do okay. He's so Bantam's gonna pull himself up into the grave. Yeah. And then squat in there and wait for the rest of his team. Okay. Because the last time he ran off. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll go second because I don't trust ladders and giant robots <laughs> for some reason. Naturally. <laughs> no offense so, to giant yeah. robots. Well, thankfully, I'm not giant. So I'm going next then. So wait, are you oh, going? Do you mean when you say you're going second? Do you mean you're going after base plate or second I'm, after? After Bantam. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, at this point, you know, it, it's fine for you all. There's there's just enough room in the grave. It's a roomy grave. They they paid extra. Uh, you just. <laughs> It's the deluxe grave, you know. <laughs> um, uh, this is enough room for you to all be in there. Uh, so uh, the at this point, the the fire in the distance grows higher, uh, and you begin to hear weird chanting in another language, an unrecognizable language. It almost sounds like a like a backwards record is playing very creepy stuff from whatever these people are doing by this bonfire uh what do you all do i mean it's a fire only good people set fires let's go i find this music interesting it's not quite the same music as normal people listen to but it will be interesting to listen to uh, in a new sense I listen to this daily. What are you talking about? Or maybe I put my <laughs> records backwards or burn them enough. <laughs> so how tall are these gravestones? <laughs> um, they're, you know, regular gravestone but, height. Uh, maybe you're slightly taller than them. Okay. Like punch so, down, you can hide. Bantam's going to clamber out of the grave and he's going to like low, even for him, do like a low run over to the nearest gravestone to the group and hide behind it. Okay. Well, thought you're gonna punch it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So up close, you see that this group is comprised. It looks like maybe early twenties, like teenagers. There's a bunch of like beer cans everywhere. It looks like they're definitely having a party. One of them, though, is uh not quite in the partying mood. He is in a black robe, reading from a 
tome bound in some kind of skin. Uh, and he pulls out a, a small bag from his cloak. It looks like he's about to throw it into the fire. You have moments to react. What do you oh, do? He's going to launch himself straight at the dude. <laughs> <laughs> it is the only way. It is it's the, the only, only way. way. <laughs> Give me a reflex roll. Also, I, I have a launch with him too. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> I promise I don't do everything on impulse. <laughs> that is a fa- okay, no. I'm war dying that. I am war dying that immediately. I believe in you. That is an eight. <laughs> okay. <Damn. sighs> so, mixed success. Um, so, what were you aiming to do here? Um, uh, just launch out the dude to tackle him to prevent him from throwing the bag. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> so you you do that. Uh, <laughs> you 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 push him, and as you as you hit this guy, he feels like a uh, he's just like a heap of skin and bones under this rug. Uh, no no muscle whatsoever, and he goes ow. Uh, he falls back. His elbows get all skinned up. His book. And the bag goes flying. Uh, you successfully prevent the bag from falling into the fire. But he yells to the rowdy teenagers, help guys, get them, get them. And they all look, they all start like pounding their fists and they're going to give you a beat down. Oh, they wish. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Maybe I should leave this for later, but it's too funny not to use now. Mm. Uh, Angel will pull out a second grenade. No, <laughs> it's not a explosive. You're in the grenade. middle. It's not an explosive grenade. It's oh. a psychedelic grenade. No, a psychedelic, a psychedelic grenade. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, give me a second. That's an aura thing. So what it does, psionic, sorry, psionic oh. grenade. Okay. What it does, it scrambles emotions. <laughs> okay. Right at the bunch of teenagers, <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> Why are we Just doing <laughs> so... The good fight. Okay. Uh, uh, it's yeah. behind the grave, toss behind back. I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look up. Yeah, it scrambles right. emotions. One use. use. I love it. So go ahead and give me a, a reflex roll to chuck this grenade into yeah. this crowd. Reflex grenade. Oh, a six. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've got I've got one war dice left. If you want me to roll that, if you want to, if you believe in this, if, I, <laughs> do I? I mean, do you, I have a serious question. I mean, I'll leave it up to you because I'm not sure. I I'm down with whatever happens. Failure is part of the story. I'm down with that thing. All right, Let, let's let's see you what believe happens. In the then. plan. Okay, there we go. Uh, so Angel, you you throw the emotion scrambling grenade. Um, as it sails through the air, uh, a rotting green arm bursts from one of the graves, catches it, and throws it back at your feet <laughs> right before <laughs> it goes off. Um, I'm just gonna rule that uh, base plate, you are immune to these effects. Uh, do you even have emotions? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's up question. to you, of also, course. Yeah, uh, but I haven't got that update yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> so no R on you. That's fine. Uh, but but Angel, you get the full brunt of this emotion scramble. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so we're gonna see. Little... Go ahead and little... give me a die of fate. Uh, that, that's a day six, I assume, right? Yeah. Mm. A one. <laughs> uh, Instant so depression. Things get real scary. 
right? You're in a graveyard. You just saw a zombie arm. There's some kind of like creepy cultist people doing some kind of like weird ritual over there. This is completely horrifying. What yeah. is even going on? How could a graveyard be in a shipping container? And you are momentarily paralyzed <laughs> with fear. Uh, not even the warming glow of the fire can, can, can warm your emotions at this moment. Um, back to, uh, well, actually, no, I'll say uh, base plate. You haven't got to do anything yet. Uh, is there mm -hmm. anything you'd like to do? You've just seen Angel reduced to a mess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's so just you mentioned fetal position roll up front and back, <laughs> and Bantam so is about you... to take a pummeling. Yeah. Maybe. So just quickly, you mentioned a green arm came out from the grenades and threw the grenade back. Yeah. Does anything follow that green arm, or is it just a singular arm detached it's, from a body? It's uh, the, <laughs> you. Uh, now that you mention it, <clears throat> you can actually see like kind of like a robotic like piston like lowering back into the ground. It's it's like a special effect. <laughs> all right so no, no follow up on that front i'll just i'll keep that for later but uh, i will i suppose because my friendly ally gnome friend who is about to uh for lack of a better word fight for his life i will um following my uh my love of kicking which has existed since the beginning of this mission. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Base plate is going to assist him by running over, jumping into the air and doing a dive kick into this crowd. Yeah. Let's go. Uh is that could we'll say that could be like force or reflex, depending on how you want to play it. Uh I love it. Let's uh, have that dive kick roll. I'll go with and would you count this as a kick it down advantage? Oh yeah. You're kicking it down. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Told you it was going to be funny. Just watch this fail. <laughs> I believe in us. All right. Here we go. Oh, wait. But need to pull it through. Again, here we go. Ooh, there we go. That's a number. Way. Six, four, yeah, just do yeah. a very a very robotic hiya. You see <laughs> a base plate fly through the air. Oh, and I can't uh I can't see your rolls right now. What did you get? Oh, uh, eleven. Nice. Oh, that is a success. Um I'll just say uh what would a robot kick? I think normally unarmed damage would be like two d six drop lowest, but I think since this is like your your directive, right? Mm. We're gonna give you like how about three, like it's a set three damage. Like this is what you were made three. for as of twenty minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> this is my you, life's purpose as of twenty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you knock one of uh, the the bully looking dudes out. Uh, and he just goes down like a sack of potatoes. He's knocked out. Uh, Bantam, there are still three bully dudes left. They've got like flannel shirts and mullets. And oh, no. one of them like cracks a beer can on his head. He's like, let's get him. What do you do? Bantam, um, oh, this is this is the, the typical doom music players moment. Bantam oh, is going yeah. to flex furiously. <laughs> Um, he's gonna. So whilst he's flexing, he's, and then he's gonna stand up, grab the legs of the cultist bully, and swing him round to try and hit all the other bullies. Yes, let's go. Yes, hitting hitting a guy with another guy is peak fist. <laughs> <laughs> this is a force roll for sure. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> oh hell yeah! Please. Oh, yeah, you no. didn't. That is a 10, that's a success. That... Yes. You're a war dice. <laughs> <laughs> um you okay, so go ahead and uh, this is I don't know, like an improvised weapon. I'm gonna say a guy's a D6. <laughs> you get a whole D6 for this guy. Cool. Go ahead and roll up guy damage. <laughs> for skin and bones. You get roll guy damage. You could add him to your inventory after this. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is two damage. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um the another bully goes down. Uh the 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 actual like like scrawny guy reading the book somehow clings to consciousness <laughs> and he's just like, Why? What are you doing? Why did my life go so wrong? At the the moment before my ultimate success, and he's like having like this whole like monologue moment as you're pummeling people. <laughs> um, uh, Angel, uh, I'm just gonna say you are still freaking yeah. out, even though uh, no more of these green arms are popping out. It seems to you in this moment like there could be like a, a zombie horde yeah. bursting from these graves at any moment. What do you do? J- just. Uh, fall to the side, fetal position, up and down. <laughs> what is the meaning if the afterlife we all just become brainless, flesh-eating people? What is oh, the no. meaning? What is the purpose? <laughs> Should they accept the dirt and just start covering themselves with the dirt? <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> Bantamweight, uh, the two remaining bullies they both leap at you fists flying do you kind of stand your ground waving this dude around oh, taking lumps he, he, or i'm keeping waving he's keeping okay waving. give me another force roll as you try to fight these two off <laughs> let's go that's an 11 oh my that's an 11 that is 11 <laughs> that is ad- how are we rolling this is either going to be very good or very bad later yeah, We're using all luck now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jinx it. Just keep it as it is. <laughs> Another one goes down. Having seen like three of his buddies knocked out and a, the, his leader used as a baseball bat, the last one, he, he drops like the six pack he was holding and just goes <laughs> running off into the night. He makes it about 15 feet before he hits the wall of the graveyard <laughs> and you hear a glunk and he just like falls back knocking himself out uh <laughs> a zombie angel stands up runs and also runs into the wall <laughs> <laughs> um the only one left is uh the cultist guy and he begins crawling towards his tome slowly slowly as if hoping no one notices and he says one more word one more word is all i need what do you do so basically he turns towards him (laughs) turns towards phantom just sort of looks back at the cultist and then just be like can i please (laughs) (laughs) Please let me just just one, please. It's all yours. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, sort of just jumps up, claps his hand a bit, like sort of giddy with excitement. Goes over to goes over to this our favorite weapon, and um, who governed by the ankles. And you know, like you know, in from like Mario sixty four when he throws Bowser, right? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I think yeah, I think you know where I'm going with this. But like, there's a there's a lake nearby or something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> He's gonna just grab him. Like, doesn't even move his hips. Just sort of rotates around his waist, and will try and throw him into the lake to finish him off. Heck yeah! Give me a force roll for this this discus toss. This living <laughs> discus. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> We're just bullying this guy. <laughs> How to read the bullies. But we're not bullies. We're the good guys. We're fist. We do <laughs> the right thing all the time. Throwing us <laughs> cold fist. That's, 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 that's a partial. That's a partial? That's a partial. Okay, so um <laughs> The good news is you do it. You grab him by the legs, you discus toss him, he flies through the air, he lands in 
the the lake, which is actually just like an inflatable kiddie pool with some plastic <laughs> plants arranged around it. Nice. He gets knocked out. The bad news is as he's spinning and spinning, he catches a glimpse of that last word. And he yells, Alakazam! <laughs> and the oh, fire no. <laughs> rises uh, tall as a person or three gnomes, I guess. And <laughs> Wait, you're a person, I should say. You insinuating um, the gnomes are not people. <laughs> <laughs> that was rude. I apologize. Oh, no. <laughs> that was rude. I take that it's back. Joke. Gnomes <laughs> are people. In fact, gnomes are like extra condensed people. It's like concentrated yeah. people. You get more person per person. We, with su- <laughs> we support our gnome allies here. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I would not deny a gnome their rights as a person. Um, so. <laughs> You uh out of the fire slowly rises a horrifying monster as the last of the spell is complete. The guy's chucked into the kiddie pool, no problem, but now there's this monster. And on that note, uh, let's all take a five minute break, stretch our legs, grab a snack, and then we can see what's up. <laughs> nah, let's see. Oh, let's see. I'm so ready for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so bursting out of the fire is uh, a weird monster that looks like clobbed together from various different parts. It's just like uh, and weird, a weird raw face and, and jaws that are almost like a crocodile. Uh, it's got black eyes and it yells, Who has summoned me? Uh. <laughs> and it like looks around at all the knocked out partying kids and like the 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 cultist is like face down in the pool uh and it's just like oh hey hey what's up uh, uh hey <laughs> just look at just wait for a bit you see like a sort of just a loading symbol going across <laughs> Like his eye, then it just comes back to his normal eye again. Uh, hello, fellow, hello, fellow person. How are you? I mean, I've I've been better. I was I was in the bath, and I get like summoned up here to this. It's embarrassing, honestly. Uh, wow, that is very good, fellow person. That is <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> Say, do you have any hobbies and or activities? Yeah, I mean, normally I I like to come up and, you know, just like slaughter is a big one. Uh, Mayhem. Uh, I'm not so much like targeted corruption. I just like rampaging in general. But it looks like all the rampaging. Yeah. We did that already. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun, right? I'm better at rampaging than you. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh you. Ah! Oh, you. Ah! <laughs> hey, uh, I mean, it looks like the rampaging is over with. You know, normally I'm supposed to, like, you know, do a big fight. And, you know, ah, I got these crocodile jaws. Like, but it, listen, if you if you can just hand me, and he points over at the tome. And he's like, just give me that. And then I can get guaranteed I'm not going to get called up here anymore, which works out better for me in the long run. I'll be on my way. We'll be good. No fighting. How's it sound? How do I know you're not trying to trick us? (laughs) What? No, look. (laughs) (laughs) Say what? We're, we're a couple of rampaging dudes over here you know we we know what it's like no no i wouldn't i'm not i'm not into trickery i'm into you know killing stuff i'll get you that book yeah you can outflex me whoa <laughs> <laughs> oh no so 
I don't know how to do a contested role between a demon and a gnome and a, <laughs> some kind of bodybuilding challenge. Uh, so let's just say this will be you rolling a force and uh, we'll, we'll interpret the results from there. I can definitely do that. <laughs> oh, uh, no. That's an no, 11. No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, oh my God. You, you're rippling no muscles put the the demon to shame and he's just like ah oh, i got to give it to you. you you may you throw a mean rampage and you outflexed me uh look tell you what if you if you give me the book he's like fishing around in his pocket <laughs> and it's the vibe here is it's a little bit like someone forgot your birthday <laughs> and they're trying to like look around for a present and not let on that they forgot and he's like, look, I always carry this on me as a reward. And he like pulls out some keys and he's like, it's like a it was like a half-eaten hand. He's like, nah. He's like, oh, oh, I got something for you. And he pulls out uh it's uh a pink fuzzy dice that <laughs> perhaps a taxi driver would hang on the rearview mirror. And he's like, this here. Is a magical item. You're gonna want this, and I will trade it to you for that book over there. What do we think, team? Angel is knocked out against the wall at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> Angel, I think I think the, the effects of that grenade have lasted long enough. Yeah, the, 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 luckily. Let's... You, you're no longer afraid of everything, and there's a yeah. horrifying demon to talk to, so it's, oh, it all yeah, works out. Fair enough. <laughs> you can just mosey on back and just yeah, get yeah, into the just... So, what did I miss? Oh, 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 if there's one thing, is this one takeaway for this episode? Yes. He's offering us a great magical item for a book. Okay. Now, I may that not be programmed like for accounting. I may not be programmed for accounting, but I think that is a great deal. I do too. What can you do with the book except use it as Kindle? Like, you know, read it. Ugh. Fuzzy dice are way better. Cool. They're nice to fiddle in your hand. Let's get the dice. Cool. Bantam's going to go dice. finish the book and hand it over immediately. No <laughs> questions. Nice. So uh, uh, the demon grabs the book and it's like, ah! <laughs> and like the flames shoot up around it. They're green and horrifying and warm. And then like the fire instantly dies down. It's like, okay, cool. Deal's a deal. And he hands you the fuzzy dice. And on closer inspection, you see each face on the fuzzy dice is a six making this a one-time use guaranteed ultra success <laughs> oh yes <laughs> uh the demon waves and he's like later he disappears back down to the fire That's, no. can bantam hang the fuzzy dice off the top of his cone hat <laughs> yes <laughs> beautiful that's the type of fashion we like at this. He just jingles and jangles. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the episode, we're making a gnome Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> um, not far away. There's like a like a large like walk in uh, vault. What that's called like you know the graveyard vault and the big stone stone door opens up and you see that behind it uh the big stone door was actually styrofoam and there's just like a very normal wooden looking door with a handle leading to the next room a crypt by the way mm -hmm. is that what you meant oh what's that a crypt is that what you meant? oh a crypt. yes oh. thank you okay. yeah okay. um so what would you all like you to do you guys want to go over to the anonymously opened crypt? Onwards, I'd say. Yeah, move. But, but I kind of the bonfire. Unless, is nice, unless you want to bring our favorite weapon from the lake, you know. 
<laughs> nah, I don't need him. <laughs> now there are many more favorite weapons to be found. Yeah. Onwards then. Onwards. Uh, so you open like the normal, like wooden looking apartment door and you see uh, 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 a party. Uh, there is uh, uh, a crowded living room. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a a hideous uh, 70s American apartment. Everything is done up <laughs> in browns and oranges, avocado greens. Uh, oh, there's an orange couch. There's avocado green curtains. The chairs are mustard yellow. People are milling about in leisure sh- suits and very tacky clothing. Um, uh, there's like a lot of like party noise filling your ears. And uh, you see uh, a, a tiny, like nervous looking fellow waving you over frantically. He's, he's doing one of these. Do we want to mm-hmm. keep him waiting just so it's all? Yeah, I'll wait, I'll wait back. <laughs> keep it awkward keep it awkward he looks dismayed and he starts like double handed like, ah. what's the aura on the guy what's the aura on the guy uh, give just, me the color he, he looks distressed oh the aura yeah. um whatever color like 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 social anxiety is <laughs> pure, <green>. pure social anxiety <laughs> What's the general uh, vibe of the rope then, if I may ask? Uh, yeah. Everyone else seems fairly relaxed, although there is a guy in the far corner. He's got like a blue turtleneck sweater and a drink in his hand, and he's not talking or engaging with anyone, and he's just glaring out at the party. <laughs> and the guy ushering us over, is, does he look like an old gentleman, like a old, like gray hair and all that? Or No, no, he looks maybe mid-30s, kind of meek. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, we do you... talk first enough. <laughs> mm. After you, Angel. Yep. Angel approaches. So when he he sees you, he just starts talking as if you're old friends, and he knows you, and he's like, "Oh, thank goodness! Do you have any idea?" And he points across the party at the guy in the turtleneck. <laughs> he's like, "Do you know who that is? Do you have any idea who that is?" Looks like you? Steve. I don't know. I don't know just... either. Reminds me of a Steve. I don't know. Steve? Ah. It, you know when someone generally like gives you like something? Like you, you are a Greg, you know? Yeah. I am Greg. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> he, he writes that down in his notes. <laughs> um, he's like, listen, I was hoping you, you could do me a favor. Uh, it's, I don't want to go over there. I don't want it. I don't want him to know. I don't know who he is. You know, in case we're, you know, in case I know him. Can you? I need. Can you go give me his name? Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, really sure. appreciate it. Oh, oh. Um, what is around this turtleneck, dude? Uh, around the turtleneck, dude. Uh, there's a small like end table. Uh, and it's got like a a punch bowl filled with with some kind of alcoholic beverage. And every couple of minutes the turtleneck dude will just dip his whole hand holding the cup <laughs> into the punch bowl come up and take a drink and continue glaring out at everyone well, other than that it's just it's a very crowded room so lots of cover if that's what you're going for can i <laughs> um go stand by the table and then hold a flexing pose and invoke sneak to hide <laughs> as a garden as a, as a statue <laughs> okay i won't make your roll for this one i think wait uh, let me see. Is that automatic? A uh, uh, garden gnome with fuzzy dice on head. <laughs> yeah, the best garden gnome around. God damn it. Okay. Yes, you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and annoyingly, like after a moment, like a lady comes by and she looks down and she's like, oh, it's so cute. And she like <laughs> pats your head. And she's like, I gotta get a garden gnome for one of my parties. Um, also, I have, I have terrible news, faceplate. Your um, uh, before you can react, someone walks by, serving 
with a serving tray of wieners <laughs> and holds it out and offers you an hors d'oeuvre. This is food. This is food. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'd like to think, base plate, he, he looks down, like, grabs one, will pick it up slowly, and then, you like, from from other people's perspectives, you just see him, and his head starts twitching. You can see sparks flying out of his neck as he tries to comprehend what on earth is this small finger doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I'll just take the damage, seeing as I've not done or well, not taken any yet. Okay, good. Go ahead and roll up uh, food damage for me. <laughs> now the real question with all is: food more painful than a man? <laughs> is a wiener more painful than a man? It's the question of the uh, ages. <laughs> Philosophers have debated it. Since the dawn of time. <laughs> uh, quick question: We let we would you say my armor would soak this up, or is it just I take full damage here? I would say probably full damage. <laughs> it's a psychic attack. Yeah. <laughs> Two. It, it, it hurts the same as it hurts the same as food damage is equal to man damage. That's what we figured <laughs> out today. <laughs> So gnomes are people and food damage <laughs> is man damage. You heard it here first. You heard oh. it here, folks. <laughs> uh, how much how much is the food damage, by the way? That is that is two damage. Okay. Uh yeah, so it's like a, there's like a power surge. Uh temporarily everything's kind of like staticky and there's like some interference with your vision. Um Angel. Yeah. Uh, so the capable have, one. Phantom has successfully hidden right next to Turtleneck Dude, and Faceplate's just really struggling with this uh, cocktail weeder. Oh, what, what, what do you do? Apro approach the Turtleneck guy. Okay. I'm like, hey, what's your name? He, he looks at you, and he kind of like looks you up and down, and he's like, who's asking? Me? Yeah, well, my name's Me Too. Funny coincidence. Ha ha ha! His drink starts like sloshing around. And there is a slow realization that comes through Angel why this is a dangerous room. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> name's Angel. He oh, always... that's a cool name. And he yeah. rolls his eyes. <sighs> <laughs> trying everything at this moment to not do anything angel just kind of scans him up and down is there a wallet like oh um him? yeah you see there's uh he's got like um he's got uh uncomfortably tight powder blue uh slacks on and you see the outline of a wallet <laughs> sorry for that image uh, you see the outline of a wallet <laughs> uh Coincidentally, though, it, the wallet is eye level with Phantom Wayne. <laughs> with who? <laughs> oh, with Madam, uh, and there is just like this moment of Angel going towards Bantam, like taking a second to realize if it's a garden no more Bantam. And just <laughs> eyeing... Yeah, it could have been either, really. <laughs> and just. Uh, the cartoon moment of I to the wallet to Bantam to wallet to Bantam to wallet to Bantam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Can and he this. pick up on social cues? <laughs> Bantam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bantam just obvious really, really obviously winks at Angel while still flexing and trying to be a gnome. So what do you do as a job? <laughs> <laughs> uh, little of this, little of that. <laughs> and yeah. he reaches his hand down into the punch bowl uh, with his cup <laughs> and just fishes around, gets himself another long drink, and he's like, how about you? You know that's unsanitary, right? Putting like your whole hand in. 
<laughs> what are you like some kind of a doctor <laughs> um, th th at this moment there's this whole body shiver <laughs> from angel angel i will say as an arsonist yes uh, you are all too aware of the news reports of just how flammable polyester clothing was in the 70s. That just, it flitters into your mind for a yeah. second. I'm not saying you have to act. An intrusive thought occurs that this guy is head to toe dressed in polyester. Uh, <laughs> it's a walking bonfire. Yeah. Uh, do you smoke? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, you, you want one? I have yeah. one. And just yeah. pulls out the lighter and just approaches him and just lights him. <laughs> <laughs> you light him? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, there are screams throughout the party. Turtleneck guy starts yelling. He he's like grabs the punch bowl and tries to dump it over his head to put it's out alcohol. the fire. Um, there is definitely a moment for, for Bantam to pull some kind of shenanigans. Uh, oh yeah. Is... Bantam, Bantam is taking the wallet from his pocket while he's freaking out. Nice. Uh, so uh, you can go through the wall as this guy's yelling. He's just like, ah, Oh, why would you do that? Why are you so clumsy? I thought uh, it was unhygienic. You didn't listen to me. <laughs> There's got to be better ways to disinfect than to light me on fire, though. What are you... <laughs> That's the only way I know. There is no soap in the 70s, right? <laughs> <laughs> there is, in fact, soap in the 70s. Ah! Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the laser shoot uh, material is now like, Kind of like cooking onto his skin. Uh, <laughs> and the fire has moved up to the turtleneck. It's like his his sideburns have caught on fire. Yeah, and they're smoking. Yeah, it, just trying to pat him down because, you know, probably Angel has probably leather gloves to just kind of anti fire stuff. Yeah, just, yeah. If mm. if they saw a Bantam take the wallet. <laughs> uh, so you have successfully got the wallet. And you see uh, there's a driver's license, a New York driver's license issued 1975. This guy's name is Joseph Charney. There he's not charcoal. <laughs> oh. Ah. You put the char in Charney. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so he's like smoking and black and, and he's just like, He's he's inhaled a lot of smoke from his own like burning form, so he's just like I gotta go lay down now. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of drifts off to one of the the orange couches and passes out. Uh, Greg rushes over uh, the nervous party host, and he's like, "Oh my goodness, what just happened?" Mm -hmm. He was flammable. <laughs> <laughs> Did you did you at least get that guy's name? Yeah, did we? Phantom hands over the whole wallet. Oh, nice! <laughs> Just the whole wallet. Just the whole wallet. To who? To the guy? To to yep. Yeah, nice. Uh, the moment <laughs> the the wallet is placed in Greg's hand, uh, he begins to flicker, and you see that everyone in this room is in fact a hologram. And as the hologram projector dims, Greg beams and says, oh, yeah, Joseph Charney, I know this guy. And then the party dies out and two more doors open. Uh, one of them uh, wasn't there a moment ago. It just opens into the wall and it looks like it's made of stone. It's like covered in slime and it looks like it's ancient. Uh, there's also a small door through the fireplace, which shut down. And you can head to the fireplace or through this weird stone door. What'll it be? I mean, so, you know what I'm voting for? But more fire? 
But of course. <laughs> Can you oh, fit due to what? Due to our affinity to fire and successfully using it, my suggestion would be to go through the fireplace. I yeah, predict I our successes. There we go. <laughs> Easy pickings. Uh, so you all head through the fireplace. Uh, there is like a long brick corridor covered in soot. And eventually it leads you to, it looks like kind of like a wooden uh, like bark. And you open the door and you have arrived at what looks to be a desert island. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the sky is painted blue. There's a big spotlight for the sun and some like haphazard white clouds painted on the ceiling. Uh, there is a styrofoam uh, cliff face in the distance. And you see two things immediately catch your eye. One, there's a, a man in a black suit, very nondescript looking, towering behind a plastic palm tree. And he's being menaced by uh, a, like, a, like a large, like ogre figure with only one eye. What do you all do? I took a hit last time. You guys go talk now. I'm not doing that anymore. Social interaction is out. <laughs> How big and strong is the Cyclops? The Cyclops is huge. I would say it's nine domes high. Uh, it's <laughs> bad. Nine bad. Are people. <laughs> it's it's ripped arms are two gnomes wide. Uh, <laughs> I don't know when dome became a unit of measurement. <laughs> <It's perfect. laughs> I reckon I could break him. <laughs> okay, okay. I will also warn you, he's got a big pile of boulders nearby and he's reaching for one to throw at the dude in the suit. What do you do? Oh, oh, this is, I think this is time for another run and tackle, personally. <laughs> Only we're not running and tackling the Cyclops because that will not do anything. <laughs> okay, uh, so go ahead and give me a reflex roll. For this uh, this patented bantam run and tackle, that is an ultra success. Let's go! <laughs> nice. Um. So not only do you uh, keep this guy from from getting hit, uh, the guy pulls out a very distinctive. It looks kind of like a Luger pistol, but it's made out of gold. And he points it at the Cyclops and he fires off a shot of his own for a solid six damage. Almost like it's <laughs> set damage or something. And he looks yeah. up at you and he's like, thanks, I owe you one. Let's take this sucker out. Uh, this It's flex time. It's oh, flex yeah. time on the spot. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about base plate? So you have a now... Like bleeding from a from a fairly good gunshot wound, Cyclops. But this Cyclops, it it's it looks very annoyed with Bantam, and it's about to throw a, a roughly Bantam sized boulder <laughs> Bantam's way. Uh, what do you do, base plate? Well, so giant creature with one eye, right? Yes. Okay. And what's bad for eyes? Lasers. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so base plate is gonna quickly again flip out his laser rifle and he's gonna do an aim shot towards its uh, well its eye and try and sort of blind it or at least get him to miss his shot. Okay. By the way, what's bad for eyes lasers was the slogan <laughs> of my local LASIK surgery place, which is why I still wear these. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so go ahead and give me a, a roll to uh, shoot this sucker in the eyes, <laughs> or the eye. Uh, is it? Would it be reflexive then, or? Yeah, yeah, because you're like really carefully. Or I guess tactical would also yeah. apply since this is like a like a very like. You know... uh, it would make a difference for base plate. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a war dice to that. So that was a six, and then. More dice, more dice. That's, that's oh, 
That's a four, so, so it's ten. Ten. That's a success. Okay. Uh so you <laughs> you were aiming to to blind him with the shot? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and, and roll up damage. Uh yeah, one second. Uh, uh plus one. And the damage is a two. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh this this uh it's it's <laughs> well uh let's just say that this this creature is is so tough you haven't really damaged it so much as blinded it. So that's you know good news, bad news. Hmm. Uh and it roars in anger, and in both hands it picks up uh boulders and just starts like blindly hurling them at the lot of you. I would like each one of you to make a reflex roll as this hail of boulders sails at you. This is going to oh, be like dear. my first properly bad roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to get... <laughs> it goes okay. all downhill from here. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Let's go. Two partial successes. See, that's a six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got an eight. Yeah. A nine. Okay, and so... You got six? I got a six, yes. Yeah, so that's a failure. Okay. Um <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so we'll deal with the failure first. You get hit with a boulder. Uh <laughs> it hurts and it sucks. Uh so I'm gonna uh, would you mind rolling one D six for me for your, your boulder damage? Boulder damage. <laughs> boulder damage. <laughs> A real question is boulder damage more or less like three? <laughs> so that's More. three minus one, so that's one. It's one damage. Okay, okay that's one pretty da good. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it just like bent one of your antennas slightly. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, it's what because because base has got armor. It's more just hit like the boulder hit him. He just bounces off. Just yeah, yeah. Like scratches backwards. your your finish a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna ask you two. I'm gonna ask, in in your when you envision a partial success for dodging a giant rock hurtling towards you, what does that look like? <laughs> ben, do we have an idea? <laughs> That's an evil laugh. I could be going a bit far, but for Bantam, a partial success is catching the boulder. <laughs> And then being knocked over backwards by it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're like temporarily. So I will say uh, you will take uh, boulder damage, but now you have a boulder of your own. <laughs> so go ahead I'll and roll, roll 1d6 boulder damage. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, oh that's oh. Intense boulder damage right there. Six yeah. damage, but I have one armor, so that was five. only five damage. I am still alive. Oh. Thank goodness. So, for those watching at home, this is why generally we don't try to catch boulders at this. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not part of the training. Uh, Bantam went off script with that one, but has a boulder to show for it. Um, um, Angel. Does yes. does catching the boulder occur to you, or, or what would a partial success look like for Angel? Partial success to Angel, dodging out of the way, but also falling into like a bunch of like scorpions that have, were previously not there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought the scorpion pit. Oh no! Yeah, exactly. Scorpion <laughs> okay, pit with the sign that was not seen before. I'm screen. So. You are now like in it's like a tiger pit, but with scorpions. Uh <laughs> I have to actually look up poison. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Well that's not good. Um, that poison is their venomous. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um so uh you you are completely covered. 
and scorpions and like all of their tails hover above you as if like one move and they're going to all strike. So we'll, we'll cut momentarily <laughs> to, I think base plate, you are the, the most, you're not currently under a boulder or at a scorpion pit. <laughs> so it feels like now is your moment to shine. There's a blinded howling cyclops not far from you. What do you do? Yeah, I would like to imagine after getting knocked knocked back by that boulder, base plate still just sits up, like gets up from prone position, shakes head, just and there's again blinded cyclops. So how like how far? What sort of distance would you say is the cyclops from base plate? It's it's maybe like twenty feet away. This is a cramped desert island. Okay. It's like three palm trees, a, a newly discovered scorpion pit, and a stack of boulders. <laughs> Right. Uh, what? Well, mm. oh, is there anything I could do other than shooting? Is the question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll. You know. I'll. Um. First, you'll basically like find the closest boulder to him. He'll dash forward, take cover behind that, reload his rifle, and he'll take another few frag shots at um. This at uh, the the cyclops's head again. Trying to get a bit more of a lethal shot this time. Okay, sounds good. Um, so uh, go ahead. I'll say uh, you'll get like a plus two situational bonus. You're behind cover. Uh, it can't rightly dodge because it can't see the shot coming. Uh, funny enough, the closest boulder to take cover behind is the one that's on Bantam at the moment. Uh, <laughs> so you can like look down and be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and aim up, take your shot. Uh, so go ahead and, and give me a roll there. Yeah. Excuse me, Bantam. <laughs> <laughs> and what what uh, what's that? Would this be? Or is it just a flat I guess roll? It's a tactical. Yeah. Tax plus two. Here we go. Oh, okay. That's a nine. So that's still part. Yeah, it's partial. That's a partial. You haven't gotten to say this yet. What would, <laughs> uh, so a partial, it looks like it's going to return fire is the problem. And there's also a mm. boulder hurling towards you. Uh, what would, what would a partial or boulder dodging look like for, for Bantam? Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, for base plate. For base plate. So he, <laughs> So for base plate, um, for him, as as he is a uh, a security droid, void of emotions, as we established earlier, he's he's not too concerned. I mean, he's somewhat concerned of his own survivability, but it's not it's not his main concern. So I'd like to imagine he's, despite the oncoming danger, as he's in cover and has a target to shoot and neutralize, he will sort of he will just con- he steadies the nerves that he doesn't have continues to fire at this cyclops and maybe gets a bit sort of gets into cover but not in time to fully avoid the uh this boulder naturally yeah so uh we'll just say you take like you just it kind of like skims off the top of your head and you take two damage <laughs> and this boulder thing <laughs> two, <laughs> two damage the until it just falls off <laughs> yeah um uh, so uh, we'll cut real quick. Oh, sorry. Ro- go ahead and roll damage for that snipe <laughs> attack there. Uh, quickly, about the damage I take. Is that with armor or is that just flat damage? No, th- your armor would apply here. Yeah. I, th- okay. I think the only time your armor wouldn't apply is like the, the kind of food mm-hmm. thing or any kind of like psychic attack. Yeah, is definitely so, cool. yeah that's just zero damage then. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's like a clonk and it rolls on. <laughs> um... <laughs> Angel, you are covered in very pissed off looking scorpions. Is there anything <laughs> you'd like to do? <laughs> That's a really good question. Uh, is, is it a situation where I can jump out and pray they don't sting me? You could try. <laughs> this, try is, this is the classic you could certainly try. Uh, yeah, let's try it. <laughs> uh, so I guess that'd be and, reflex. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just, just quickly, the damage I deal to Cyclops, it's another two. <laughs> Oh, just, okay. just singe a few hairs on his head. Yeah. 
give him a trim. <laughs> you you exchange zero damage clonks to the top of your hands. <laughs> Let's do this. A seven. Ooh, that's um, partial. Yeah, you definitely get out of the scorpion pit. You shake off all the scorpions, but not before you feel a couple of jabs. Um, so uh, I'm just going to wing it and say it's the venom uses the same rules as poisoned. Uh, okay. So you are. Oh, boy. So you're you're. Poisoned right now, meaning you don't take any damage now, but the next time you do take damage, this sting is going to catch up with you and you'll take the additional uh, okay. venom. Um, also, you just feel bad. Like It, it doesn't feel great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it starts swelling up. Uh, Bantam, this feels like your moment and you're not you're oh, done well, being yeah. cover. You oh, know, you're yeah. strong enough to lift this boulder. What are you going to do? You are the cover. Love it. Go on. Yeah! Top of the boulder straight at the Cyclops. Hell yeah, give me a force roll. <laughs> oh, man. I'm loving this dude. Come that is on, an eight. That's an awesome success. Yeah. Um, so, go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> um, what would what would the damage be? Is it 1d6 for boulder? Oh, 1d6, yeah. Cool, cool. Boulder, cool. Does the boulder same damage. damage as a skinny dude. <laughs> All the damage is the exact same as my fifth damage. That would be four damage. Oh, nice. Okay. That's a good amount of boulder damage right there. Uh, so your boulder smacks him in the head. He's temporarily dazed. He spins and pinwheels and stumbles closer. The partial is this shadow falls over you. It looks like he is about to fall and land on top of you. I need a reflex ro roll to dodge. Oh, oh no. Oh no. That is a nine. That is a nine. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to give you a tough choice. Um, You can dodge out of the way. And we'll say maybe even like, like you bump into him. Kind of like, imagine like a fall, a redwood, a tree, a tree that's about to fall, right? It could go to the left. It could go to the right. Your tough choice is, which one of your teammates is this ogre going to land on? The recently poisoned angel or base plate? Base plate. <laughs> I'm sorry. No hesitation. I'm, sorry. I'm really sorry for that. Zero hesitation. Yeah. Like, like you, like, so you throw this boulder, you just run off base plate, just see, where are you going? Turns back. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was really like you didn't even hesitate. <laughs> You're just like no base plate. <laughs> Robots are people too. Yeah, robots are people. Gnomes are people. Arsonists are people. Um, <laughs> you heard it here, yeah, folks. Base plate. Give me one d six. Ogre fell on me. Damage. Ogre <laughs> fell on me. Damage. Oh, oh no! Surely it can't be more painful than per than person being swung around by a gnome damage. <laughs> True. Let's find out. Let's find out. That is four damage taken. Taken. And uh, well, that's uh, oh, with the four armor. damage minus two. So yeah. Okay. Good. okay. Uh, so you're kind of dented up a little bit. Uh, the the world goes black. Uh, the uh, kind of a weird question, but can base plate smell? Can it? Does it have any olfactory <laughs> senses? I don't gonna die of to that. Did my creator have the terrible sense of giving a robot the ability to smell? Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> okay, so. Maybe it's like a digital readout on your vision, but you just see like like onions and and sweat and feet is is what it's computing as as the stench of the ogre overwhelms you. Uh, you also hear like a loud snoring. The ogre has been knocked unconscious. Um, the <laughs> uh, the 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 man in the black suit who's just been kind of cowering behind a plastic palm tree. He jumps up. He tucks away his golden gun and he's like, uh, come on, everybody. 
let's help get your robot out of there. And he starts like trying to drag the Cyclops off base play. Uh, what do you do? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. You, can, you, can, you can just see like a muffled scream. Just... <laughs> base play is their own robot. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's what oh. the angel says, but it sounds like. Burp, 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 oh yeah, you're all swollen up. <laughs> um, so uh, you're all able, especially with. Let's face it, Bantam's pulling most of the weight off. Uh, the ring. The the snoring ogre is pulled off his plate. Uh, the, the man in black tucks away his gun. And he's like, ah, "Thank goodness you saved me." Uh, Hey, uh, and he points to a palm tree like across from the one you entered and he's like exits over there did you guys come in from from that way it's like all right cool all right well I'll, I'll going, next to the uh, conspicuous scorpion pit yes oh scor- thank you yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even yeah, see yeah. that yeah um we need uh, her <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute who are you <laughs> Uh, he he kind of like laughs and he's like I'm just an actor <laughs> they have me I, uh, playing like a, like a victim uh, that, and he points down and he's like uh, that there's uh, that there's Murphy that's yeah. kind of like our thing the Cyclops yeah, oh. yeah. He, he's alright uh, can I have a look at that gun <laughs> oh, oh yeah yeah sure and he takes it out and he holds it to you, over to you. And he's like, uh, pretty cool, huh? They call it a degradation pistol. Each time it fires, it does one less damage. Eventually, the whole thing just explodes in your hand. Can I have it? Uh, I don't know. I'll so flex cool. you for it. <laughs> well, I mean, I would lose. You're, you're a buff little dude. Uh, I'm really not supposed to. I don't Oh, you know you want to though. <laughs> Here, roll, roll. Uh, give me a creative roll to try and convince this guy. Uh, this is beautiful. With your compelling argument of you know That's you seven. want. <laughs> seven. <laughs> Wait, no. Can I? Can I invoke the, the dice? <laughs> you want to invoke the dice? I want to invoke you now. Can. Okay, so. Ultra success. Beautiful. Not only do you do you get it, he uses his last uh, degradation pistol of repair kit, so it gets it all the way back up to full, and the the tip is like straightens out. Uh, so yeah, this gun will fire six five four three two one, and on a one, it'll explode in your hand for one d six damage. Damn. Uh, oh, cool. and he's like all right take care oh, and he looks down he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna miss it but uh you three saved my life so uh oh and he's like oh careful of uh what do you call them up in the clouds anyway i gotta go uh see ya and he, yeah. he hops in the, the tree back to the the graveyard <laughs> and i guess be afraid of the sun Hmm. Uh, so so yeah, you can look up and like these clouds, they seem fine. But he did point at the next room, the entrance to the next room. He said that, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and and Bantam, you have now earned yourself a heck of a gun. Uh, <laughs> static damage, <laughs> pretty good. I'm very excited to use this. Yeah, good use of the uh, the dice there. Fuzzy dice, cool gun, no shirt. What um, next? Bantam. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the look. Uh, is there anything else you all would like to do before heading to the next area? Uh, just I would just like to quickly check if um, what was it, the Cyclops' name? But was it Maurice? Uh, yeah, Murray. I just want to check if Murray. Sorry, I like to check if he's uh, breathing. Yeah, he's like snoring. He's mm-hmm. like muttering to himself. He's like turkey legs, mm. <laughs> potatoes, food. <laughs> no, he no. is talking about food. Oh, no. Luckily, it's not actually you're just hearing about it. That doesn't affect you. But it, it maybe fills you with a little bit of, of dread <laughs> or, or wariness, knowing that uh food yeah, basically like, like he does like a hand covering motion, like he's covering his ears, even though he has none, and he's just sort of 
Yeah, I guess uh, we'll uh, move on. Rest a bit, or <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Did you guys? Uh, do you want to do a mm. rendezvous point? That's a good point, actually. Uh, that, I would be up for that because I'm halfway to deconstruction. We're fine. <laughs> I'll go check the palm tree and just start scraping the palm tree to make a fire. Is the plastic one? <laughs> Plastic burns. <laughs> so yeah, I'd, I'd say. So you want a rendezvous? Or I want a rendezvous. Uh, Bantam. Bantam, you want a rendezvous? I'm happy at rendezvous. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so out of the ceiling, like lowers, like a little grass hut, and there's like like luau <laughs> music. And it's like there's like a cooler with some drinks. It's like very nice. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe like um, maybe there's like a like a like a buffing kit. So uh, a base plate you can like buff out some of the scratches from your finish. Uh, and let me see here. So uh, with the with the rendezvous, uh, da, 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 up. You can choose to rest and recover 1d6 hit points. You can restock and refill one limited use item. Or you can receive a useful fact about the mission from the referee. Uh, how about we start with a, a, a not pot. What would Bantam wait like to do? So I can refill a single use item, right? Yes. Can I refill the fuzzy dice? Sadly, wait. I mean, I imagine them like kind of like disappearing on use. Uh, they but they I just burst into flames. To say that, so damn it all. Yes, you can refill, <laughs> but know this: next time they will disappear. I will take that. <laughs> I have refilled my fuzzy dice, and life is good. <laughs> they, like, they, they lost all just... their fuzz, and now the fuzz like regrows like a chia pet. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, how... but basically, he's gonna get like some metal polish and a hammer, and just start like fashion the dents out of him, and but you know, polishing his metal back up to a good, clean standard. Heck yeah! Uh, so give me a one d six to recover hit points. Mm. Uh, also, at this time, while everything is happening, if it's gonna be a bit, uh, just giving like, how would you give a robot a massage? Is the question. Very carefully. <laughs> you seem tense. You seem solid, relaxed. I am made of tungsten carbide alloy, mostly. It is very rigid and hard and tough in terms of material quality. <laughs> the question is would Ara work on a robot? <laughs> Because do, do robots have auras? Theoretically, that's the question. Because aura is like a general vibe of something in my case. And I think I also imbued things with aura. So it's more like me transferring energy to it. Oh. Mm. Uh, I'll up to y'all. So, I'd say, I'd say, what would you... Yeah, what would you think uh, base play? I was going to ask you the same thing, but I'd say if they can imbue an aura into some into someone or something else, maybe I'd say it'd work. But Let me... yeah, it says you may also regulate and amplify your aura to conduct it between bodies what? while doing so. NPCs who are touching you won't choke, and anyone who remains in contact, physical contact with you for about ten minutes regains one to six HP. Okay, I'm going to say yeah, because it's maybe like an electromagnetic aura kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, it's like a static electricity charge, and plus, you definitely have like ten minutes to operate here. I will take this generous act of kindness and feel myself better. Whatever the term is, you want to roll it, or do you want me to roll? Oh, if you want to roll it, I'll let you. Yeah, I'll go ahead. It. Go ahead and roll it there, Angel. There we go. A five. Five. There we go. That's more than one. Heck yeah. So you regained five hit points and uh, what uh, what would base plate like to do? Intel or refill a one use item? Uh so I already I already healed no. one. Oh yeah, I see. I, I, yeah, yeah, totally. So, so you've got six altogether. Nice. 
Um, wait, I guess that's Angel. Open? I don't know. Oh, Angel. Yeah. Uh, out of a cooler, Angel just pulls out another grenade. Oh. Yes. <laughs> a psychedelic one. A psych psychosis i forgot the name of it psionic there we it's go like, yeah yeah psionic. there we go all righty just lying around in the base <laughs> uh so let's take a quick break here yeah. and then we will wrap up the adventure <laughs> Of course. All right. Uh, through the next palm tree, you see it's uh, it's a small room, but it's very tall. Um, it's painted to look almost like a stormy outside mountain. Uh, facing you is a, a sheer cliff face made out of painted plywood. And it looks like one of those like indoor climbing challenge places people do for exercise. Because there's even like neon hand grips leading <laughs> all the way up the, the wall. No. Um, it looks like about maybe halfway up, there's some kind of like a, like an opening or something, but the hand grips continue on past this kind of like cavernous opening. Whoops. We might have lost angel. Nope. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, okay. just to make it uh, past the, uh, the hand grips continue on up into clouds about two stories up that churn. And there's like flickering, like artificial lightning. And you hear like a loudspeaker <laughs> making thunder noises. Uh, and every now and then. As you look up in the flickering lightning, you see dark shapes darting through the clouds. What do y'all want to do? So how tall is this cliff face uh, in terms of gnomes? Uh, <laughs> let's see, how many gnomes for a two-story building? It's about two stories worth of gnomes. Hmm. <laughs> We're going to have all the gnome math worked out. Uh, in the comments below. <laughs> watching it out. No more. No me. No me. No my... <laughs> I'm sorry, not part. We need to leave the gnome alone. Yeah, next one needs to be in robot measurements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How come we don't do that? Huh? Okay. Uh, so what would y'all like to do? So it's like a sheer climb up. There's some kind of cavern midway through, and then it's into these rather awful looking clouds up ahead. Climbing to the so cavern some... is definitely a bet. Yeah. Naturally. And we're probably, if I had to guess, we're probably going to get attacked by birds or whatever those things are. What are you talking mm. about? <laughs> Let me just hide my notes here. <laughs> um, uh, so who's who's going first? There is a second where, as a third option to everything, uh, Angel just pulls out the lighter. <laughs> it's made of plywood. Plywood is flammable. I mean, there is like a gesture of should I? <laughs> you're you're basically everyone? like in like an elevator <laughs> shaft, <laughs> just to paint a picture. Uh, yeah. So lighting on fire just, might not work very well. Just basically, just he puts up a hand. He's like, not now. <laughs> Slowly puts it down. Well, Does it I went like bantam weight. You were volunteering to climb up there. The flux was yes. Uh, yeah, bantam. Uh, you get about uh midway up before the first attack. Uh, and something looks kind of like it's like a, a pale fleshy pterodactyl comes screaming out of the, the clouds it's got a, a mouth like a couple of broken bottles uh, hinged together and they're they're coming chomping down they're darting at you uh, the cave entrance is not very far ahead you could possibly scramble in there or you could just hold your ground and fight it or anything else you can think of what would you like to do i'm gonna sound a bit like a hypocrite here now but <laughs> in terms of gnome scale how big are these <laughs> <laughs> well in my notes they're they're smallish but in a gnome's notes these things are freaking huge a gnome uh, and they a have half. a wingspan of one and a half gnomes so 
in theory, one of them might be able to carry my weight. Yes, in theory. Cool. It's time. <laughs> the patented launch. <laughs> 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 That'll be a reflex roll. I hope this goes well. This is still half as nice. Like that, just like a one scene from Avatar, just jumps off the cliff face, lands on it, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see Avatar. how this goes. That is a seven. <laughs> okay, partial success. You leap off the cliff face. You look down like this is like at least your story up, you know, so you you see your companions down there just probably staring up in disbelief and <laughs> there's no luck. <laughs> you grab a hold of its talon feet with these like weird, overly long, almost like human hands with long, <laughs> sharp nails. This thing is messed up. Uh, the good news is you did it. It does hold your weight. The bad news is it starts carrying you up into the clouds and two more come swooping at you. Uh, you can practically hear the one you're riding yell, hey guys, I got lunch in you know, pterodactyl language. Oh. <laughs> so, I put it just straight English there. Just <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that in a, in a perfectly clear voice. Uh, the pterodactyl in a, in a goes, British accent. <laughs> I, I don't mate, want to do a British some... accent. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not pot. Would you supply a British accent of a pterodactyl saying, hey guys, I got lunch. Hey guys, I got lunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, gappers, you would not get what will be played by not <laughs> this episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, what was that, Edgy? Uh, no, I was just doing my own version, never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so Angel and Base Plate, you see your, your companion carried up into the clouds with it's like a swarm of hungry pterodactyls. Brewing. Uh, what do y'all do? <laughs> there is like a look towards Base Plate. And as it uh, as it kind of turns back, there is a gun already pointed up like a pistol, <laughs> and knees into the ground. I'm gonna use a reload and try to shoot them. So mag dump onto a pterodactyl. Not that it's scaring phantom, but the ones that are coming in. Right, right. That sounds mm -hmm. good. Okay. I think. And what was I doing now? I guess. Uh... Using yeah, base plate. Uh, using his mechanical uh, strength, will just catch his rifle on his back and just qu as quick as he can start climbing up the mount, the cliff face, trying to get into the clouds. Awesome. Um, okay, so that will be a reflex roll from both of you, and we'll resolve uh, Angel's uh, mm -hmm. reload first. Okay, a eight, a partial success. A partial success. Yes. Um, <laughs> so uh, oh my God. go ahead and roll damage <laughs> and base plate rolls a 12 you got a 12 not just success. got a 12 <laughs> is that like like two sixes? i'm not just two sixes yeah <laughs> Damn. okay <laughs> all right the pterodactyls are the worst part but the fact that they're british that's just <laughs> that's <laughs> enough <laughs> Let me just attack with this. A multiplier times two, right? I believe so. Because it deals double damage. There yes. we go. 12 damage total. <laughs> Max damage. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, okay, so you just obliterate uh, one of the three pterodactyls. Uh, it's just, it's gone. And like its bottle falls to the ground and, and shatters everywhere. Um, base plate. Uh, so you were trying to climb up there. So I'm, I'm thinking an ultra success is you basically uh, you you do climb up there and you're like eye level with um, your eye level with bantam weight still being carried by this thing. So just go ahead and tell me like your next part of your plan and we'll just have that work. Like what, <laughs> what's your next move? Ah yes, the uh, the next part of my plan <laughs> that I had. <laughs> so okay, up in the clouds, there's there isn't like a nest or anything, is there? 
that these no. pterodactyls come from no uh no there's just like a there's like a little just a little cage like a little bird cage <laughs> <laughs> and what hmm. <laughs> there's a little bird cage like how how big of a cage in um... robot in robot terms in in robot terms, it's it's uh one base plate, roughly. Uh yeah. And would you say would you say just hypothetically, if base plate was to say dive off this cliff face towards the pterodactyl carrying uh what's why well, I forgot his name, uh Bantam. <laughs> Bantam, that's it. And um sort of aims to sort of tackle him out of the pterodactyl's claws and into the bird cage <laughs> into safety <laughs> would that be theoretically in the realm of possibility with an ultra success yes uh you do just that and there's like this like slow motion mid-air tackle uh bantam as you're spinning around in the air you see a uh, base plate leap off at you like tackle you uh and you go flying through the air into uh, a bird cage and and this bird cage is very well made because it has to contain pterodactyls so you're all you're both wedged in there it's a very tight fit really there's only enough room for one base plate but we have both of you in there kind of like crammed <laughs> against the chicken wire um <laughs> the two uh shrieking pterodactyls uh, they fly at the cage and they cling to the side and they begin like biting and clawing at the both of you. Um, real quick, Angel, is there anything yeah. you'd like to do while this is going on? There is a se second as of uh, to score a dive, pulls out the scoreboard with a tan and promptly burns it and wants to climb the cliffside. Just try, not, not shooting at the things, just trying to sneak into the midway to the cavern. Oh, you go into the cat. Okay. Yeah. You sneak into the cavern. Try to uh, climb in. Yeah, you, you climb on in. Inside, you see six furry, large, sleeping forms. Uh, sleeping what? Forms. These are six slumbering grizzly oh. bears inside a cave. And at the far end of this cave, there's some kind of weird glass display with a golden arm illuminated. And a couple of items on a table you can't quite see from here. You are separated from this display case by six sleeping <laughs> grizzly bears. Um, I would argue that grizzly bears are flammable. <laughs> <laughs> I would too, but there's a... <clears throat> there is a thing. So... Uh, Due to our control, is there a way to kind of slip past them? Ooh. And just like if they're trying to wake up, just lower down a bit that like scale it down. Okay, so here's uh first of all, just go ahead and give me a d6 roll for no reason whatsoever. Oh my god, <laughs> how many more bears? Roll. Give me a sec. The bears are multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> A six. Oh that's no. A... Oh no. <laughs> what do... So let's just say hypothetically there was a good chance that this can't afford the upkeep for six grizzly bears, and perhaps under in a in a different world, in a different universe, let's say only one D6 of these bears are real. Unfortunately, all of these bears. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, so you see the auras a <laughs> six slumbering grizzlies unfortunately not a single one is fake um no <laughs> you can you can definitely try to sneak past them maybe it's like a reflexive role yeah we're trying that and also at the same time they hold out the grenade and with the pen <laughs> yeah yeah just just like above them. in a worst case scenario uh, so go ahead and roll. Uh, we'll say uh, tactical or reflexive to try and tiptoe That's your way. I, I believe reflexive because of a higher modifier. Okay. Eleven. Let's go. Oh. 
you do it. Somehow you manage. Uh, there's, a, there's a one dire moment when one's like, and like it looks up and it looks you dead in the eyes and look then, at that then in- rubs, rubs its eyes and it just like falls back asleep. I look at that in the eye with the grenade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you make your way to the back of the cavern. There is a display case uh, with a with a dim light shining down, illuminating a golden arm. On one side of the display case is a hacksaw. In the other is a handwritten note that says, do what you must. Oh, okay. What would you like to do? Take the arm and take the hacksaw. That's all. So you pick up the hacksaw. You go to take the arm, but oh, the display case, the glass display case is locked. Gosh darn it. Nah. Punch it in. There we <laughs> you go. Punch it? <laughs> yeah. Why not? As okay. quietly as possible, punch it. <laughs> it's not quiet, I know. <laughs> Let's do it. Um I'll say go ahead and, and give me another die of fate. I'm sweating. A three. Please, please. Did you say three? A two. A two. A two. Uh, so two bears don't okay. like that. And they're the <laughs> two closest to you. So they start getting up, shaking sleep from their eyes, rubbing their stomachs. You hear growling, <laughs> growling, hunger. Um, as they look at you like you're a great snack. Um <laughs> Thank you. You you have the golden arm. You have the hacksaw. Uh, real quick, we're going to cut back to inside this bird cage. You got a couple of pterodactyls trying to claw and bite at you. Uh, bantamweight, what do you do? Punch, punch. <laughs> Hell yeah! No hesitation. No hesitation. No breathing. <laughs> I did that in the wrong channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a success with the 10. Yeah. <laughs> Roll damage. Oh, I'm um, obliterated. That is six damage. <laughs> you knock this thing out and it falls down, down. There's only one left. Uh, and it uh, base plate. You can see it looks like this pterodactyl is about to just like give up and fly off. Is there anything do you want to like grab it or fight or anything? Or you're just going to let it take off. Uh, if and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just let it fly off. If yeah. it's not going to fight us, why, why provoke it anymore? Yeah, it's had enough of this. It flaps off. Um, you also see at the back of the bird cage there is an exit into. We'll say this could be the final room. Um, back in the cave, Angel, you have woken to sleeping grizzlies. They're definitely going to eat you in a matter of moments. <laughs> what do you do? The most reflexive thing anybody has ever done. <laughs> Pull the pin and roll it towards them. <laughs> uh, the grenade goes off uh, loud enough to wake all the grizzlies. Um, let me see here. I think last time we had our die fate to determine the emotion. I think this time, just for fun, how about you give me a creative roll? And this will be me kind of like seeing if you can sort of choose the emotion that the blast detonates at. Okay. On a failure, it will be rather Ultra success. Time. Ultra success? Yeah. There's <laughs> no way. You can oh, see yeah. it. So, I've so never a, seen so many sixes. With an, I know, this has been like a lucky evening, I got to say. Oh, yeah. I, I'm like, here's my, here's my deadly fun house. Oh, it's a massacre. <laughs> You know, it's a fun house. It. <laughs> it's a pretty fun house, you know. So with an uh, an ultra success, um, not only am I going to let you pick the emotion, you also are just outside the blast. It's perfectly yeah. lined up for these six bears. So what do you want these bears to feel? Um, uh, what's that emotion? Because not native English. Uh, an emo- emotion you would feel towards like a king per se oh i want to have an army of six grizzly bears like is what I'm loyalty saying. loyal yeah. there we go okay 
So one by one, the Grizzlies stand up on their hind legs and then they all like kneel on one knee like knights. <laughs> you have uh, raised a grizzly army. <laughs> <laughs> and just with the with the hand in a hand <laughs> and a hack so just go out of the cave statue of liberty pose yeah yeah like one by one like they lower their heads as you pass um yeah. unfortunately like the way this cave is structured it's designed not to let grizzlies out otherwise the rest of the front house would just be grizzly food so your yeah. army cannot follow you but they they all wave you uh tearily away um <laughs> a little a single tear yeah a single bear tear uh, with that, uh, you are all able to scramble out of here. You have acquired a hacksaw and, and a golden arm. Anybody uh, want into, it? Uh, oh, we final... can't take the bears with us. Oh. <laughs> no, sadly. They're, they're stuck in their cave. Uh, we are now at the the final challenge of the fun house. It is a, a tight stone corridor filled mostly with a furious looking human head who the top of this head scrapes the ceiling and its fleshy cheeks almost reach both the walls. There's maybe enough room to squeeze past if need be. The head looks at you and in a booming voice, it yells meat. I want meat. What do you do? <laughs> Flags. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? That sounds like the best option right now. Honestly, yeah. The it's head, the uh, only option. It opens its mouth. It's the only way. It opens its mouth as if waiting to be fed. Is there any, like, glowing weak points within its mouth? <laughs> no, sadly. There's just, like a, like, a big, gross, slimy tongue that's lolling around. And there's not, like, that back of the throat thingy, like a punching bag. Now that you mention it, <laughs> and, and the back of this thing's throat, it looks a heck of a lot like a punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Think me later. <laughs> now. <laughs> so, as per fighter, <laughs> as, as per fighter, let me just get this up real quick. Right, right. Yeah. I can do my unarmed super attack, which deals 1d6 plus 2 damage and knocks most living things unconscious. <laughs> Once per mission. Yes. When you do, you have to state the name of the super attack. What do we got? It's Gnomish Rage. Oh! <laughs> it's good. Gnomish Rage. He's yes. gonna, he, he pulls both his arms out, flexes, squats, flexes again, beats his like abs, beats his chest, and then runs straight in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see here angel preemptively takes off their dog collar and puts it to their chest so uh Benham, do you think uh, you have to roll that like, a, like uh, i attack? do have to roll okay. as an attack but <laughs> but i have these fuzzy yes dogs. oh my it's all coming full circle now <laughs> So you activate the demon dies. This time they disappear. This time they disappear. they disappear. I will take that. But you now have an ultra success uh, on your fighter's one time permission super attack. Uh, let's have that damage. The damage will be... Oh, God. Bonus damage. 1d6 plus 2. That is... Yeah. 4 damage. 4 damage. Uh... I think so you you leap in this thing's mouth you like you almost slide a little bit on the tongue you launch off as like this leaping gnomish <laughs> rage punch uh when you hit uh the hangy ball thing you hear a <laughs> ding 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 like a boxing <laughs> match um and for the ultra success you definitely knock this thing out <laughs> that's uh, good <laughs> So, 
Uh, both of you, though, see the mouth slowly start to close as it's unconscious, uh, sure. potentially trapping poor Bantamweight in there. What do you do? I rush in and put the golden hand in between the teeth, just to hold it up enough for him. Nice! Okay. Uh, the teeth come down, uh, sealing the golden hand. It was a noble sacrifice. It allows Bantamweight to escape. Uh, with the head knocked out, you can all squeeze around its jowls and leave the giant head mm -hmm. and i will say good going because this is the single deadliest room in this place <laughs> oh my god <laughs> last time i read this i one shot at someone by accident oh my god oh my oh god. no <laughs> um so uh beyond this is is a door leading to uh uh, part of your fist training you would have known you're now stepping across a barrier to like an interdimensional portal this final room isn't actually part of the fun house this is the fun house's control room located deep underground and here you see tied up in a chair gagged is a little grandfather type guy little portly guy with white hair sticking up all over his control room has plenty of monitors watching your progress all the way through and uh, also like tables lined with all kinds of gizmos and when he sees you he's like oh, oh, oh. hey Bolly. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm, I'm just guessing you, you untie him and everything yeah yeah mm. oh as soon as he spits out the gag he's like oh thank you you saved me ah You're not a pirate. <laughs> my, my name's Wally. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm surprised you made it past the funhouse. It's such a super ultra deadly mode. How'd you even do that? <laughs> <laughs> as as Bentham flexes. Silently flexes. Like yeah. <laughs> Angel pulls out the lighter. <laughs> yeah, but... yeah, basically just puts a thumb up, just Yeah, we did it. Don't know how. My probability calculator, we should have been dead. Yeah, you should have. That's amazing. Oh wow, you know, I couldn't quite see from where I was sitting in my chair. Did you did you manage to take out the guy in the suit? The, the guy in the, the suit? Yeah, there's like uh, he's the one who tied me up. I think he's I think he's with Cyclops. He infiltrated. Uh yeah, uh he said it to ultra deadly. I mean you got rid of him, right? That's how you made it here, right? <laughs> this just like basically just free like oh she's the others just come into a huddle, just group huddle. <laughs> It's going to be a really low huddle. Do, like, do, <laughs> or a really no, high, if you lift. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get on what I can either get on one knee or I could just pick you up and bring you up to shoulder height. <laughs> Holding shoulder to shoulder. Do, do we tell him? Do we Do we tell him what happened? Or do we just we just sweep this one under the rug? <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of feel bad. I kind of wanted to burn the guy. He seemed burnable, you know, the suit and all. <laughs> I mean, I think we, say. we 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 tell him the truth. Yeah. Okay. Uh and so he kind of kind of sags and he's like, "Oh well, you know what? It's fine. I don't I don't blame any of you there. That feller's a master of deception. It's how he wormed his way in here. You know, he told me he was an actor. I thought he was one of the extras. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's come to think of it, like we don't really have actors. We just have like holograms, and we got the six. I don't know. He's, he's really convincing. Wait, uh, wait, wait, what about the cool. what about the bears though? And the graveyard. Oh, oh the graveyard? Uh well those uh the kids in the graveyard, are uh, they uh we conjure up them up with a demon we have captured. Uh, uh it took us forever to get that demon. Uh that's oh. kind of my prize. Uh prize of the whole fun house, you could say. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. You know, All right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we tell them about the one, demon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, yeah, about the demon. Uh, it might have. Well, he gave us some fuzzy dice. That's true and honest. You you got the fuzzy dice. We've been trying to get those out of him forever. That's a no. miracle. Where are they? Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, okay, we, we lie about this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, pre pass. Yeah. This is a pre pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. so oh, the bears got them, unfortunately. Oh. So I tell you, I don't even know why we have those in there. It doesn't even make sense, bears. Um, so he he thanks you all. Uh, this is despite a few setbacks at the end, this is a mission well done. You have saved the fun house. You have saved uh, Fist's master engineer. Uh, the training camp will be reset. Um, Longstockings uh, thanks you profusely. And I don't know, like gives you all some grog or whatever a pirate would have as a reward. Maybe some doubloons. Uh, work. Yeah, yeah. Flammable uh, something. Like. She teaches a base plate like a, a sea shanty about a robot pirate. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, and so with that, I'd like to go around uh, and ask each one of you like how you celebrate this mission. Well done. Uh, we'll start with base play. Like, what do you do after the mission? How do you celebrate? Good times, all that. Well, I'd like to imagine base play. Uh, after learning this sea, uh, sea shanty. Uh, just for just for you over two, like, will we celebrate this on like the helicopter way, on the way back, or are we going to a, like a bar or something to celebrate? Mm -hmm. So I might like to imagine we go to some sort of fist, um, con a fist uh, supported bar. We go <laughs> yeah. down there. Base plate is singing his she shanty, doing a little dance, and then at the end he gets offered a like a <laughs> mug of grog and just free his sparks flower his neck and he shots <laughs> <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Nice. Mm. Um, how about uh, Angel? How do you celebrate? Uh, Angel probably uh, the bar activity, fist bar activity that they do is make Molotovs. So <laughs> that's the bar based activity for the next mission to be better prepared. Heck yeah, you will start with a Molotov. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Not Pot, how does Bantam Weight celebrate? Bantam, Bantam drinks, Bantam flexes, and Bantam gets into bar fights. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, and with that, we, we wrap up the Funhouse mission. Uh, that was really fun. Thanks for playing, everybody. Yeah, thank you. For, thank you very much. Thank you for running yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That, that really was, was a fun house. Yeah, <laughs> that really was, that really was a one piece. <laughs> it was a fun house, but you all made it a fun home. Aww. 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 Aww.